These are the first virtual pets. But they wouldn't exist if it weren't for the most controversial video game of the 1990s, Night Trap. How do you get from scantily clad teens to sweet dogs and cats? Let's go back in time. It may be the most addictive toy in history, and it's definitely the hottest thing this Christmas. Nintendo video games. In the late 80s and early 90s, video games were widely seen as kids' toys. News programs explained the new video game fad to parents across the country. Now what's Nintendo, you ask, and why should you care? The conversation centered mostly around kid-friendly Nintendo games, like Super Mario Bros. 2 and The Adventure of Link. But there were still concerns. Maybe you will be brain dead from staring at this thing all the time. No, but have things gone a bit too far? In 1992, Night Trap was released, and it sparked a storm of debate. There was a growing concern on Capitol Hill that parents who buy some of those games may not realize just how much violence they're getting. Night Trap featured real actors and full motion video. Here's James Riley, the writer, director, and co-creator of Night Trap. This wasn't his first FMV experiment, and previous demos had gone over well. The parents were going, wait a minute, that's, that's a real image. You're interacting with TV, I can do this. Hasbro saw an opportunity to compete with Nintendo and offer something new, video games that appealed to the entire family. Night Trap, which was ultimately released by Sega, definitely missed the mark. Night Trap's predecessor was a mystery game where the player used security cameras to figure out who had robbed a safe. You start off with this really simple, clean concept that, you know, could be refined and, and um, really have an edge to it and a look and stuff, and you end up with this thing that is a, is a combination of bad notes over time. The game's setting was then changed to a girl's slumber party, with ninja burglars trying to steal the money. And then it became a game about vampires who want to drain the girl's blood. The player views surveillance footage to trap the vampires and save the girls. But you wouldn't know it from listening to the news. It is a sick, disgusting video game in my judgment. It's an effort to trap and kill women. I mean, how would you like to have a teenage daughter go out on a date with someone who's just watched or played? three hours of that game. Shame on people that produce that trash. It's child abuse in my judgment. By today's standards, Night Trap isn't that violent. But its voyeuristic gameplay made it a convenient target for a Senate investigation that led to the creation of the ESRB. For Rob Fulop, one of Night Trap's developers, this was the killing blow. Understand that these are not harmless toys, that uh, they can indeed uh, cause great emotional and uh, other damage to a child. Bob Keeshan hosted the children's TV show Captain Kangaroo for 30 years. He was a beloved figure. Seeing him denounce Night Trap on TV was horrible, said Philip. He decided that his next project would be so cute and so adorable that no one could object. That game was Pets. Philip had a yearly tradition. He went to see a mall Santa and ask what was in demand that Christmas. This year, a Santa imparted some simple wisdom. The most popular thing that kids ask for every year is a puppy for the last 50 years. Philip decided to give them a puppy. Pets was a success. To date, the series has sold 24 million copies. Pets and Night Trap have both faded in public memory. Pets is now owned by Ubisoft. The most recent game came out in 2014. And Night Trap? Well, it's back. There's a remastered version out now on PS4 and Steam. And these days, it's rated T for teen. If you like this video, I definitely recommend that you check out the documentary Night Trap 25 Years Later from the My Life in Gaming YouTube channel. Amazing, very good watch. And of course, a huge thank you to the 90s for being so weird.